Hello everybody! I told you that I was I'm not full. I am full of not words again. <laughs> I told you all we would be right back and we are back with us talking about the emoji movie. Really it's strange, this movie's already being encapsulated simply by its own failing. Like it failed critically hard. Box office, it's failed pretty hard. I'm gonna say Tom Blonde made more money. Atomic Blonde's actually meant to be a smaller, <coughs> pardon me, release. <coughs> pardon me, y'all. Man, it's a funny little breath there. Yeah, yeah, it's funny. It's like not many people are really, really talking about the Emoji movie. So we decided to go see it simple because I was like, I, I now am just interested. How is this, this terrible? It just came out. And I think I messaged you, like, hey, you want to go see this? Yeah, I was kind of wanting to see this just out of curiosity. He's like, okay, how does this work? How do you fashion an entire movie around emojis? I was like, what? And hey, guess what? They really don't. <laughs> they try their damnedest, though. Hey, there, there's not really, though, the biggest issue with this movie. Well, to say the biggest issue, there are about 428,768 issues with this film. <laughs> But one of the biggest problems with this film, and I will agree with all the critics in that, this movie doesn't fucking do anything. Like, when we went to see it last night, there was hardly anybody in the theater with us. I mean, sure, it was like 11 at night, but still, there was nobody fucking there. And I think one family left, like, halfway through, because I didn't see them when we went to leave. And I was like, okay, either they got kidnapped by aliens or something <laughs> while we were sitting there. <clears throat> but there was one lady who kept giving me dirty licks, looks because I was like, be loud. I wasn't like that loud. I was just talking a little bit sort of like how we are right now. But I mean, for fucking crying out loud, we're watching the Emoji Movie. It's not like we're watching Schindler's List. It's not like we're watching something good. We're watching the goddamn Emoji Movie. And y'all are going, you're going to get pissy about the fact I'm bitching about this piece of shit. <laughs> As you can see, I didn't enjoy this film. <laughs> yeah, so... So many things you can nitpick with it, and it's like, okay, that's fine, that's actually a valid thing. Like, why they, like, if, okay, they leave their little texting app. I actually, we might want to get to the actual plot. Because we need to explain why they need to leave the map, or leave yeah. their app, and also, why, who is they? Uh, this movie all really revolves around T.J. Miller's main character's name is Gene. He is supposed to be a meh, because we have to have narration. Yeah, yeah Mary Meh and Mel Meh are her... Are his... Are, are his parents. Yeah, and They're one one's, meh. one's played by Stephen Wright, which is kind of an obvious joke that I was expecting. And really, they did nothing with that. That was the weird part. Because Stephen Wright's big shtick was always that he would tell... Ironically, very funny jokes with this, like, just monotone that he does and everything. And it's one of the funny things about Stephen Wright. Like, one of his best jokes I always remember. Uh, he said, I walked to my apartment today and, some, and somebody stole everything and replaced it with exact duplicates. It's hilarious because it's stupid, but it's funny. I said, this is stupid, but not funny. Yeah, this is just plain... Stupid. This is insulting. I mean, it's strange to describe a movie that way, especially one that should just be a kid's movie, but it's, like, insulting to one's intelligence. But the only reason why we care about the fact that Gene is wanting to be a man is because he turns out that he can do more than just man. He's like... But he wants to be able to fit in and not be considered a freak. Yeah, so already you see the big... Thing. And only that, but people are real assholes, and it's like the emoticons, or the emojis, I should say. But he does stumble across emoticons, but yeah. the emojis are fucking dicks. That's this entire movie. Why are you laughing, you meh? How can you goddamn tell he's a meh? How? How do you see that this son of a bitch is a meh? I mean, does it say meh above his head that we don't or, see? I mean, everybody just knows each other. I don't. I don't know. Mm -hmm. Obviously not, because of what we learn later on in the movie. 
But yeah, he tries to do this. He tries to be a man. They throw him in there without any fucking making sh Because pretty much they have this big wall and they're like, this is how it chooses. Because I guess apps have life of themselves, which dear God, that makes me feel really scared to sh delete any game I ever don't feel like playing anymore. Oh my God, I killed Pokemon Go. But, uh, he freaks out whenever he's trying to do his face because I guess it's hard. He crafts under pressure and does like a million different faces. And This kid ends up sending this random face as one girl. Uh, and she like, like, what's that emoji? She like acts like he just sent her, ha <laughs> I killed a Jew yesterday. It's like, okay. All right, psychopath. <laughs> and... Because of that, they want to delete him. Delete him, and it's like because he's a malfunction is what they consider him. Yeah, though here's the big thing: we're supposed to be like, oh, we're supposed to be against Gene being deleted. Why? Why are we against this? <laughs> Gene's. What made the movie a lot shorter? Yeah. Not only that, but it's supposed to be the happy, who's voiced by I can't remember who. Oh yeah, Maya Rudolph. Smiler. Yeah. Yeah, that little happy emojicon. Emojicon? <laughs> emoji. Yeah. The original emoji. But, like, she's supposed to be our villain throughout the movie. And I get the joke right there. It's like, haha, ha, our villain's actually really happy and she's actually a psychopath. Like, smiling all the time because that's how she's programmed. Mm hmm. But,. Then there's the big thing. It's like, well, they're like, we need to get rid of him because if he keeps messing up and everything, it, they'll want to delete our app, or they're or the, our users going to want to delete us, or something. Why they can't just replace him with another man? His parents know. are both fucking mess. Yeah, actually, his mom. Mm-hmm. Jennifer Coolidge. Yeah, it's still for his mom. Very mess. But. It's one of those things where you're like, yeah, delete him. It kind of makes sense. It's one of those times where you feel for the community where they're getting fucked over by one asshole. <laughs> and you're like, yeah, I don't care about Gene. Gene's kind of a dumbass. And that's Gene's biggest problem. He doesn't have any characteristics except for he's just a dumbass. I heard him Not just... as much as High Five. Yeah, High Five is eventually introduced. He is James Corden. And, oh my god, he got old quick. God, I want him to shut up. There's a lot of times I was saying to him head really loudly, going, shut up, James Corden. Shut up, you are not funny. I don't know his actual, like, fucking Tonight Show thing he does might be funny. I just, I've never watched it. Yeah. All I know is from this is I want him to eat a bullet. Sorry, that's a little violent. That's getting a little dark. <laughs> I got dark quickly. <laughs> hey. Wow, we jumped to an extreme. Did that escalate quickly? Mm, yeah, sometimes it does to me. <laughs> but, oh, God. And from there, they want to go to the Dropbox so they can go to the cloud and reprogram themselves. Well, first they meet up with this hacker, Jailbreak, who turns out, spoiler, is this princess emoji who was... Tired of being a princess, and so... I want to be more than just a princess. I haven't seen this story about 14,000 times already. Feminism. Mm-hmm. And it's... She's voiced by Anna Faris, and holy shit, can Anna Faris not voice act at all? Mm -hmm. I mean, T.J. Miller was already bland, and everything he said felt like a robot was putting out his words in his voice. Well, that's just kind of his voice. Yeah, but it got to the point where... It, it's like, if he's a main character, you don't believe a single damn thing he says. Especially when it's voice acting. Yeah, especially when he's supposed to be all the emotions, all the emojis. And instead, it feels like he doesn't have anything but, at best, as, eh, slight happiness. Yeah, it's they're like, waiting to go to the clouds so that... They can Princess, reprogram themselves. Yeah, so that Princess Jailbreak... So that she can live free and be who the hell she is. And so she can reprogram him to be meh. And High Five wants to get to where he can get reprogrammed to be on the front of the yeah. choices. And it's like... 
Yeah, this little VIP lounge because uh, the owner of the phone, Alex, has not been using it much. They've been using the fist bump. Why? Why do I care? And that's just the biggest thing I kept saying throughout this entire movie. And I almost wanted to say to Megan, it's like, why the fuck should we care? Who cares? Yeah. That's the thing. It's like, we, it tries to make this point of, oh, well, we need to be worried about these characters. Why? Because they're the main characters. I still don't give a shit. You gotta give me a better reason than that. Uh, but yeah. They decide to go on this trip and they go through... Like all these different apps. That paid for advertisement and all that Just Dance. You got Candy Crush, you got Just Dance, and you got fucking Spotify that pop up. And YouTube and Facebook. The Facebook is mentioned, but not really used in any way. And that's the thing. It felt like it really wanted to be this like hopping through apps movie. Which like, that could have been slightly fun. But really, each app is barely shown for any length of time except for the Just Dance one. Yeah, because they have to dance their way through it. Yeah, and it turns out that the princess can't dance because... Yeah, and it's not really explained, just she can't dance. She's very stiff. Yeah, and... Ultimately, you don't care. Like, the Just Dance one goes on way too long, it felt like. It's like, oh my god, I get it. It's like, fucking move on to a different app or something else. And only that, but, as Megan was kind of mentioning earlier... There was... Turned out there's no reason for them to go through all these apps when they could just, like, go through the wallpaper. Like, just... And just walk over to the app. Yeah. Go straight to the Dropbox where they're needing to be. Yeah, it's like... It's like, y'all just... Stretching out this movie longer than it needs to be. Yeah, you're trying to give a shitty reason for the plot. It would have been something that they said, well, we can't exist on the wallpaper too long or the user will get, or the user will notice. And then they will want to delete their phone. All right, all right, cool, cool. That's a stupid reason, but it's a reason at least. <laughs> at least give something. Not only that, but they try to have this, like, not piracy app, but because they couldn't actually get a piracy app working, they're like, oh, well, here. And they make a lot of fucking sexual innuendo jokes that, oh, it's icky. Because it's, it's a 14-year-old kid. Ew. Mm -hmm. I don't want to think about a 14-year-old kid masturbating. Last thing on my mind. Hell, I think Hitler getting raped by an elephant is before that. And it's a funnier image. I'm about to break Megan. Shush. <laughs> but yeah, they go through these different little apps here and there, and it really, again, like the Candy Crush one, it's stupid, it's product placement, but constantly have to deal with high five and this stupid shit, and it could have been cutesy if it would have been without high five, who had to, I'm addicted to the candy, da, 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 da. shut up up is constantly what I was saying so almost loudly I'm like ah just, just, James Gordon can you get throat cancer please you just love some of the puns oh god the puns <laughs> I am uh, I like puns I have said some puns on here you before you consider yourself the pun master yeah but I like puns that require a little bit of thought that have a little bit of you know wink and a nudge to them here and there I don't like puns that are just blatant and just completely idiotic, which is all the puns in this film. There's not a single clever pun. Like, Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs is a perfect example. Cloudy with a Chance of Meatballs has a lot of really good, smart puns. There's a leak in the boat. Uh, I don't know what that's, that's hilarious. I was like, well, a leak. Yeah. Or the fact, like, Steve keeps wanting gummy bears, and then finally at the end, he fights gummy bears. And he actually has to save them from these gummy bears. That's kind of cute and hilarious. Or whenever, eventually, the food starts going crazy, and he gets hit in the face by the oregano, and it's a giant spaghetti tornado, and spaghetti tornado, mamma mia, that is hilarious to me. Because it's, I was like, alright, that's I want somebody to say something like that. And not only that, but you have uh, Bruce Campbell usually saying most of the good puns, and it's funny. 
here it feels like none of them are none of them are needed to be there. They're just there simply for the fact that hey, we have to have some kind of a joke because really this movie's not funny. I mean, I don't even think kids would find it funny. Find it funny. But it's not putting it together. <laughs> I will blame this movie because it just like made me stupid. Or stupider. Yeah, there are a lot of puns where just... Ugh, just sighing and moaning. Like, oh, yeah, okay. it was like, ugh. There weren't even good puns. At least like the pun in the and stupid... And there was an attempt at a Star Trek reference. Red alert. It's like, oh, yeah, they have like, Patrick we... Stewart, of course, in this. Makes such a big deal about Patrick Stewart being in this movie. He's like, okay, he's barely in it. Yeah, and, and guess so what? His like, jokes are all shit based. Yeah, it's like everybody makes jokes about him, or he makes jokes, and it's all has to do with the fact that he's poop. Yeah, it's like, wow, thanks. Couldn't figure that one out on my own. Couldn't figure out a brown squiggly thing is poop. Mm -hmm. And this feels like it was meant for like a three year old or something, or maybe like negative children. I I don't know because like like I said we only had a few people us two other people down the way who we almost had to kick in the face so they move the fuck out of the way so we can go down the aisle. <laughs> well, one actually and like this, put their legs up on the seat so we can get by. Yeah, eventually. But <laughs> then there was a family and I never heard that kid ever laugh throughout the entire <sighs> film. He seemed bored. <laughs> of course, he was above the age of you know being able to care about this movie because you know he wasn't. <laughs> He wasn't shitting his own pants. Oh, but, yeah, eventually, after they go through all these apps, like, the only part we laughed at was not something from the actual film itself. It's just because it was something that's adorable. And that is, they go to YouTube app, and they're like, we're going to distract them. And it was Surprise Kitty, because Surprise Kitty's adorable. And yeah, the, um, Gene's parents happen upon the YouTube app, and these bots are following them to try and find Gene. And it's like, oh, they're... Bots are right behind us, let's distract him and pull this video for him to watch. And it's like, ah. And it's a surprise, surprise key. Key. <laughs> Most adorable thing ever. Yeah. The best part of the whole movie, and none do the damn movie itself. Yeah, and it's. It's like the only part that we liked, and it's simply because yeah, we got like, to be away from that film for a minute. Yeah, I feel like. What's that rule? Don't show better movies in your shitty movie. Yeah. It's like, don't, don't show a clip of this cute kitty in your shitty-ass movie. Mm-hmm. Then you remind me, oh, yeah, the shitty-ass movie. I'd rather be watching Surprise Kitty over and over. Yeah, we're sitting there watching it, and it's like, oh, it's gone. <laughs> I, we were smiling for saying this, and I was like, me. it was all frowny afterwards. Like, mm. I mean, it was a little cute with the donut holes at the beginning, but... Yeah, they were kind of adorable, but precocious, but... It's like, it's like, okay, it's kind of cute. Yeah, but after a while, you just got bombarded with this film's idiocy and got James fucking Corden. And uh, eventually they get their way to the Dropbox after shenanigans. It's the best way I can describe it. And they really miss a uh, chance to have something fun. Like, in the Spotify app, they're like, here's all the streams and all that. Bullshit. Spotify has millions, if not billions, of songs on there. You're trying to tell me that the streams are just like these three different little things here and there. Mm -hmm. But they missed a chance to have the Narwhal song by uh, Mr. Keebles in there. Yeah. That would have been hilarious. Because they're like, hey, it's the whales. It would have been fine if it was a Narwhal song. That would have been kind of hilarious. I would have laughed at it. <laughs> but yeah, they go through, eventually get to Dropbox. Oh, it turns out that uh, the jailbreak is actually one of the princesses and all that. Yeah, we already said that. Yeah. But... And then she does the classic, oh, I wasn't doing this for you thing. It comes a fuck out of left field. Like, yeah. she just kind of, like, tells him to piss off. Well, he's declaring his feelings for her. And she's saying, it's like, well, it's like, I kind of like you too, but it's like, I can't. I'd really... rather you kiss my ass and, it's you like, know, I... go jump off a bridge. Yeah, saying, like, I came here because... Like, I wanted to be myself, I wanted to be more than just a princess, and he was, like, offering her this, like, it's like I want to have the fairy tale ending with you, and it's like, that, that was apparently the wrong thing to say. It's like... But she acts so vehemently angry at him, pretty much, about his, the, how dare you try to say anything to me? It's like, what a bitch! At that point, I'm like, alright! I already was done with all these characters, but you know what? I hope y'all get deleted. 
<laughs> but eventually, Jailbreak has to do this stuff to save Gene. Yeah, I forgot his name there for a second. And the phone because they're de- yeah, because they're trying to delete the phone. Because it keeps malfunctioning, kept, like because of what they're doing. Yeah, it's like if y'all just let well enough alone. That's what happened. Y'all wouldn't be worried about getting deleted. Yeah, because he wasn't even trying to delete the phone till uh, Gene, Jailbreak, and High Five started started wandering around all over the place. Yeah, wanted to like Just Dance and Candy Crush and uh, Spotify and stuff, and stuff, random stuff just kept going off, and his phone's like. Because his kid's retarded and he can't turn off the volume. Seriously. Can't volume. Can't turn off the phone. Or something. It's like, it's like, shut up phone. Shut up phone. Like one of those, I was like, turn a damn thing off or turn it down or something. Yeah, it's not like the volume is controlled by them. They could turn, you could turn off the volume. Yeah. I don't know. There's a lot of stupid parts where you're like, I solved your problems, kid. <laughs> not only that, but he wasn't doing anything until they start screwing everything up. So... They're the cause of the problems, actually. Yay! The bad yeah. guy actually is not the cause of the problems. Yeah, basically the big message that we were kind of beat over the head with nearly is that... Be yourself! Be yourself! You know, it's like, don't do what everybody else is doing. You know, feel free to be yourself. And it's like, Thanks. okay, we get it. It's like, they're... A lot more subtle ways to get this message across to kids. There are better movies that have done that message. Mm -hmm. Hell, I don't even much care. Well, someone we grew up with. I don't mind. I don't like the movie all that much just because it's unfortunate Sarah Silverman in the film. And it's Wreck It Ralph did it better. Yeah. Uh, shit. Anything you can think of nowadays. Be yourself and all that. Technically, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 is that way. It has sort of that message. But that's more of an undertone message than anything. Because it's so ham-fisted of a message. And everybody knows that you don't need to make a movie based around that message. Yeah, they don't need to hit us with the animals. Like, like, we get it. But yeah, somehow Gene sends off a text message of him doing the random faces. Because somehow he's able to break things. Because that's how that works, I guess. And the kid suddenly decides, while his phone is being completely deleted, down to the very last app, he um, can... Unplugs it, and then everything is restored. That, that's not how that works! Yeah, not only that, but you do not need... Besides that, when we plug it in, boom! Phone dead. That's all it does. This mystical, magical phone is not real. It's not even close to real. Why is this a thing? Oh, God, this movie... Blue so hard. It's not fun. It's not interesting. It's not funny. And the animation is surprisingly. Here's something weak. I just thought of. Why the hell is he deleting everything? Like deleting all the apps. Why not just first of all uninstall some of those apps? I mean, he know I know he uninstalled one of them. Well, uh, High Five was in there, and High Five got sent to the trash, and they had to rescue him. It's like. Oh, just leave him behind. Yeah, it's like, fuck High Five. Who cares about him? He's an asshole. Yeah, very annoying. And also, why not just, if you're wanting to delete everything, why not just, you know, trade in for a new phone? Or something that's like, okay, it's not working, can I get another one? I don't know. There's so much that this movie just doesn't get or blatantly ignores. Or just does so half ass. Like I even said, the animation doesn't even look good. It doesn't help that these are supposed to be emojis, so they just look like emojis. Like faces with little arms, arms and legs. legs. I mean, it's pretty much a shitty version of the Pac Man show. And I'd say something because Pac Man show sucked. <laughs> Ugh. This is. And it's strange, this is a, a surprisingly boring film. Like, you're not going to walk out of this thinking that you watched something interesting or even memorably bad, such as Battlefield Earth, Manos Hands of Fate. You're going to feel like you just got cheated out of money simply because this was insanely boring. And it was only, what, an hour and a half? An hour and, like, 25, 20 minutes. Because there was a short beforehand that was so much more adorable yours. and so much like more... Like a big puppy! Yeah, it's from Hotel Transylvania called uh, Puppy. 
Yeah, and it was adorable. And I've never watched Hotel Transylvania. Me either. But it was adorable. It was just this big puppy. And it was cute. <laughs> puppy. Yeah. <laughs> like going after this family of bone to stay in a hotel. Which, like, which is surprisingly funny. <gasps> And then, like, one of them jumped out and, I'm free! Okay, that was hilarious. I laughed hard at that. I don't know why. It made me laugh. Yeah. Uh, Are you puppy like that? Monstrous puppy like that? Nah, I don't need to meet my skeletons are all around. <laughs> Get rid of the bodies for you. Yeah, that's true. It would be useful that way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, this was only about an hour and a half. Oh my god, it felt longer. Yeah, it was a while. Like, yeah, we went to see it at like 11 o'clock at night. Kept checking our phones and yeah, watches. I was like, I kept, yeah, I kept checking my watch. Like, it was like 12 or 3. Checked a few minutes later, like 12. So I was like, oh my god, has it only been 14 minutes? Seriously? <laughs> and then checking 12 30. I was like, oh my god, is this movie over yet? It's like, holy shit. <laughs> it's like, ugh. Oh yeah. my god. Did, fuck this movie. I mean, there were longer movies that did not feel. As long as this movie felt. Like Captain America Civil War. Captain America Civil War is because something fucking happened in that movie. A lot of stuff happened. Yeah, yeah stuff kept happening. I would put this in... The bad thing is I would put this in leagues of stuff like... Ghostbusters. Superman. Or Batman vs. Superman. And just this is ostensibly bad. This it's is... Terrible. Just do not... Do not go see this. Go go see Atomic Blonde instead. Hell, go see Dunkirk. It's boring, but at least it's almost an interesting boring. At least it doesn't insult your intelligence. Yeah, um, I think we can both agree. One. Uno. Yeah, it, we have to give some kind of a score. We can't give zero, but yeah, it's one. It's. Can we have like half a half a? That seems too generous. Yeah, oh, fuck emoji movie so bad. I I don't. I made the mistake of saying, "Oh, this will be interesting. It's so bad." As I watched *Man's Hands of Fate*, yeah, it's technically really boring, but it's almost so inept, so poorly made that you kind of can't look away. It's a magical train wreck. This is just a train wreck, but there's no magic in it. There's just burning bodies and stuff keeps flipping through the air. So that's an image to go on. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, I told y'all in the Atomic Blah review, which I'm going to put up before this piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to talk about what we're going to see in August. August is a little funky here and there. There's some movies where I will have uh, double reviews, such as the past three weeks where I've had double reviews. Uh, some weeks where it's not going to be because like very little really comes out. In fact, I'm going to be fighting to figure out what I'm going to go see. Uh, next week is probably going to be a double review. Uh, for sure, there's going to be a Dark Tower review. Because I'm actually looking forward to it. It looks like it's going to be all sorts of cheese, but so much fun cheese. Especially Matthew McConaughey. Yeah, and, and Idris Elba just spouting out some just really lame one-liners that only Idris Elba can it's really like, get away with. It's like, I don't kill with my eyes. or I, don't, I, I kill I, with I, my heart. Like, <laughs> That's actually, all right, I'll give you Idris. You're the only one who could get away with that line, I think. Yeah, Matthew McConaughey being a villain is like, oh, the his tone is just kind of made for a villain. Yeah. How right, all right, all right. <laughs> uh, but also, probably Monday, it just depends if Megan wants to go see it with me. There's also going to be a Detroit review. I'm actually a pretty big Captain Bigelow fan, even though I'm not the biggest fan of Zero Dark Thirty. It's a little too long for my taste. But I'm looking forward to Detroit. I really love John Boyega's stuff, so I'm interested. Mm -hmm. I hope this movie's not five hours long, because I wasn't going to, you know... I just go sit in the corner and cry the whole time. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, there should be a Detroit review as long as it's got decent showings here in their main, because our theater's weird. Like, they showed a shit ton of Atomic Blonde, but when they were, they kept advertising Colossal, the Anne Hathaway film that came out this year, and I was actually really looking forward to it, they had no showings for it. So yeah, that'll be the 4th of August, uh, the 11th. <laughs> God. Oh, shit. It's going to be Annabelle. Annabelle Creation. I don't care about these films. I'm going to go watch it just because something. It's Maybe I might go see Nudge Up 2. I, it just depends. I don't. I didn't like the first one when I watched of it. Yeah. I so. just like Little Mouse. Yeah, I'm a little Jackie Chan mouse. <laughs> don't call me cute. Don't call me cute. 
Oh, he gets cute. Yeah, but probably more <laughs> like anything, and Book Creation will be the only review. Um, I don't know if Megan's going to go see it with me. If not, my one... I was going to say, you're probably taking Cindy. Yeah, I was going to say, my one friend Cindy, she's a huge horror f movie fan. I might just ask her, say, hey, you want to come see this with me? Yeah, sure, okay. Even though you're seeing it by yourself, I ain't, I ain't going with you. Yeah, one of them, too. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Uh, the 18th is actually going to be a pretty fun little weekend. For sure, Hitman's Bodyguard is going to be what we're going to go see because I'm actually. That looks funny. Yeah, that looks fun. <laughs> I mean, how can you go wrong, Gary Oldman, Ryan Reynolds, and Samuel L. Jackson? Like, what the hell? What happened to your seatbelt? What happened to the seatbelt rule? <laughs> All right, that's funny. Yeah. Uh, also, I'll try to get in again. This seems like it's going to be a film that's going to have random showings and all that. Uh, Logan Lucky. Hmm. I'm interested. Megan might go see it with me. Okay, it just depends okay. on how uh, things work out. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. Uh, I might try and sneak this in if I can. It just depends if it's playing near me. If not, I might try and talk somebody into let me get a screen for it. Uh, Starship Troopers Treasure of Mars. I'm actually a huge Starship Troopers fan. I own Invasion. I almost own the entire entirety of the Roughneck trilogy or Roughneck series. I don't like three or two, but I love one. Uh, also, also, I'm a huge Paul Verhoeven fan. So, I'm probably going to try and see that. Uh, Meg's probably not going to be there with me. Because, I like, one, I think you're going to probably be working whenever that comes out. And it only means it's going to be in theaters for a day. So, we'll see. Uh, and then, the end of the month. <laughs> 25th. Oh, God. 25th is going to suck. It's a combination of either Polaroid, which is the horror film where this lady has a Polaroid camera and she takes pictures of these people. Slowly each one of them keeps dying and then stuff is happening. just like shadows moving around and it's Final Destination-ish. Say cheese and die. Pretty much. Goosebumps. Yeah, it's like goosebumps is what that sounds like. A little bit more violent. It looks like it's going to be at least rated R. I'll say that much. And, uh... Probably gonna try and go see that because it's either that or Birth of a Dragon or Birth of the Dragon. And you do not know how little I want to go see the not true Bruce Lee biopic. It's like, oh wow, y'all shit on Bruce Lee's face. Y'all dug him up and shit on his face. Y'all desecrated a corpse in more ways than I even thought possible. So, yeah, that's gonna be. Next month, it's going to be weird, that especially near the end of the month. I don't know what's going to be coming in, what we're going to be seeing. Uh, we're going to be playing a little by ear here and there. Especially with the week after... Uh, what is it? Uh, Dark Tower? I, I just don't know what we're going to be seeing, really. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, that's next month. Y'all got that to look forward to. <laughs> And in between that, we're going to try and wash the taste of the Emoji Movie out of our mouth. But thankfully, Tom Blanc really helps. It's, yeah. It's a nice gin and tonic to help with that. Oh, as well. Yeah, that was so much better than this our it's piece of shit. Yeah. But it's like, such an awesome soundtrack. I sure hope that people for the Emoji Movie don't s grab that snippet of you saying that and throw that as a tagline. Because it's taken so far out of fucking context, it's not even funny. Mm -hmm. I was like, I better get royalties for that, bitch. Yeah, uh, fuck the Emoji Movie. Go bash your brains in with a hammer. You're going to have a lot better time if you go do that. For, or go see anything else. Hell, I would even say go see Dunkirk. Go see Valerian, even. I, anything other than this piece of shit. Yeah, as dumb as that was, somehow Emoji Movie managed to top it. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, we'll be back next week with... Definitely Dark Tower, hopefully and Detroit. If you think about two weeks in a row, we've seen movies with John Goodman in it. Flaring. Oh, yeah. It's and the voice. Atomic Blonde. Yeah. And <laughs> both of them, he played barely a big role. Be, yeah, it was like barely in there. Well, this is getting money. I mean, there's that. Yeah, I mean, big deal in the trailer for Atomic Blonde that he's in there. It's like, eh. It's like, I think we're in it more than they were, or he was. But anyway, yeah. Go, don't don't go see a bunch of movies. It's not even worth the curiosity sakes. So, yeah, that's all. So, I'll see y'all later next week. Well, Megan will too, probably. 
So, bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. <laughs>